where Jesus is Lord. Well, praise God for another day, for another privilege and opportunity to share with you a living word from God. My name is Dr. Garen Gatling. Uh, it gives me a great honor to share with you a pure and unadulterated word. By that I mean, there is no doubt and unbelief in it. I, I, I don't have any tradition. Um, I grew up on the street, and that's nothing to be proud of. But I say that to say this. Uh, I didn't grow up having to unlearn anything religiously. I just didn't. Um, and again, I'm not proud of that. I wish I were born again and raised up inside a Christian family and in the church, but I was not. So I learned everything from scratch. I got born again, gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ on October 17, 2010. I'm a member of a fabulous church. My bishop is Dr. Glenn A. Staples, to whom I give honor to. That's located at 700 Southern Avenue in Southeast Washington, D.C., that's where I dedicated my life to the Lord. That's where I grew upon the Word uh, under the leadership of my bishop, Dr. Staples. And then, of course, taking time to get home and study the Word and just get a pure, unadulterated Word from God. I found out, according to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, that tradition will make the Word of God of none effect. Can you imagine that? The Word of God, according to Hebrews 4 and 12, is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's in the Bible. It's active, operative, energizing, and effective. Yet, tradition, according to Jesus, will make that word of none effect. Can you imagine that? And so, there's no time uh, for doubt and unbelief. You just cannot mix it with the word of God. The only thing, according to the book of Hebrews, that should be mixed with the word of God is faith. Glory be to God. I have a powerful word for you today. We're going to be talking about how Jesus covered all the bases. I mean, how he covered everything at Calvary's cross. It doesn't matter what your current condition is. I've said this before. It doesn't matter what you're going through, what you're facing, how insurmountable it seems, how formidable it seems. Um, Literally, what the doctor said, what the lawyer said, what folks say, what your parents or anybody says about your current condition, it can change by faith in God. I mean, you could be on the brink of divorce or uh, on the edge of suicide. You could be right at the edge of waving a white flag, throwing in the towel, surrendering, giving up on life, walking out on the marriage, walking out on the job, giving up on life. Let me tell you something. Faith in Jesus can turn your situation around. Jesus literally covered all the bases. Glory be to God. As I get ready to pray, I want to give honor to the Apostle and Dr. Anthony T. Mays as well, the leader of this great ministry. He's the president and CEO of Breakthrough Bible College and Theological Seminary, as well as World Power Gospel Radio. We thank you for this ministry, Father, and, and the Apostle for his ministers. We thank God for Big Brother George, who's in the house. We thank God for everybody that's involved in getting the gospel out. It's a powerful commission, powerful thing to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray and get down to business. I have a powerful word for you today. Um, one of my professors used to always tell us, y'all keep up. She used to always say that. She was from South Carolina. Y'all keep up. So every time she said that, I knew that she was going to drop some profound things. I'm talking about in succession. And that, and that I was going to have to take some of those things back, back home, back home um, study them out, meditate on them, dig a little deeper. Every time she said that, she was getting ready to drop something that was going to revolutionize my thinking, transform me, help me uh, for my future successes. And so I advise you today to keep up. Jesus put it this way. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. So there's a responsibility of the minister like myself or any other minister um, to have the ear of the learned, to have God's word on our tongue, to hear from heaven, to be in a consecrated place, to hear from him, to hear from him, and, 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 to, and to pray for utterance, to speak the word of God boldly, to make it practical and to make it plain. But there is also a responsibility of the hearer of the word. Jesus said on several occasions, take heed what you hear. And another place he said, take heed 
how you hear. So there's a great responsibility on you as well as me. And folks, if we're going to get what we need from God, it is imperative that we align our hearing, or as King Solomon said, attend to the word. Incline our ear to his sayings. Don't let them depart from our eyes. Keep them in the midst of our heart. For they are life to those that find them. And health, or as the Hebrew says, medicine to all our flesh. Glory to God. The word of God is vital for we need the word. And on top of that, the apostle Paul said, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we need to hear the word. And so let's get rid of all the distractions. Let's come before the Lord for this next 25 minutes with an open heart and a mind that is receptive to his word. Let's get our minds off our issues, our problems, what's, what's, what's in front of us, the mountain, the storm, the situation, the circumstance, what we're facing, and trust him. Allow the spirit of God to flow through me into your ears and down into your spirit. Let God's word affect a healing and a cure in your body. Let, let God's word give you the wisdom you're going to need to face that thing you're facing. The thing you're facing is not insurmountable. Go to the book of Joshua. Uh, the walls of Jericho, they seemed formidable. Giants were in the land. But a word from God caused those walls to come tumbling down. Folks, if you'll give God your undivided attention today, not me, give it to the Holy Ghost. He will cause the walls of your Jericho to come down. The walls of sickness, the walls of poverty, the walls of lack, the walls of debt, the walls of unbelief. Jesus will cause the walls of fear to come down in his mighty name. They, he has power that no foe can withstand. Are you hearing me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that on the cross your son Jesus paid it all. He, he bore our sin in his own body on the tree. According to your word, he took our infirmities. He bore our diseases. Help us to tap into that today. We need your help. We need the Holy Spirit to flow freely. Flow, Holy Ghost. Flow, Holy Ghost. Flow, Holy Ghost. I welcome you. I realize that I cannot do this on my own power, on my own wisdom, on my own mind, on my own intellect. I need your supernatural intervention to be led by you. And so I yield to you, spirit, soul, and body, pleading nothing but the blood of Jesus. Use me to help somebody today. Open up the eyes of the people. Grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Help them to see clearly. Bring some development, some enlightenment. Illuminate us today. Help us, Lord. You are our helper and there is none other besides you. Glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I get into what I, uh, what I have written down, I was prompted early this morning to review something real quickly. Do you remember uh, not too long ago I used the phrase, the gamut of salvation? The gamut of salvation, gamut, G-A-M-U-T, meaning the entire range of a thing, the entire scale of a thing, the full spectrum of something. Um, we hear this idiom or this expression, cover all the bases. Have you ever heard that before, Big Brother George? To cover all the bases. What does it mean? It means let's deal with every part of a situation. Let's deal with Every possibility. So if something happens, we've covered all the bases. Are you hearing me? Listen to this statement. When Jesus went to the cross, he covered all the bases. I'm going to say that again because it's so profound. Listen to me. Jesus covered every possibility. Glory to God. And every part of the thing. He covered it. He covered all the bases. When he went to the cross, he covered everything that you and I can possibly, possibly face in life. Are you hearing me? Um, one songwriter said, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Watch this. Sin had left a crimson stain. 
but Jesus, oh God, his blood washed it white as snow. When you think about crimson, you're talking about a deep, deep red. A deep red. So 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 sin 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 left a deep, deep mark on our soul, a deep mark on our lives, a deep mark in our spirit. And and it affected every part of us. It affected our thinking. Come on, somebody help me. It, it affected our physical body. Do you know there was never supposed to be any sickness and disease? Go back to the book of Genesis. The Bible says God saw everything he had made. It was very good. Glory to God. Adam walked in the glory of God. There, there, there was gold, the finest gold in the garden. That's in the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. Everything was there. Everything they needed to eat off, God gave it to them. Every herb, every seed, everything, he gave them it all. Man was supposed to govern on earth the way God lives in heaven. That's all Bible. That stuff got corrupted when sin came in. And, and sin left a crimson stain. But watch it. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, will wash it white as snow. Jesus, I'll say it again, when he went to the cross, covered all the bases, everything you and I could possibly face in life. Let me give you one scripture, then I'll move on. You'll find it in the book of 2 Peter. Well, let me, let me turn over there before we go to our main text. 2 Peter, chapter 1. Rather than just try to quote it, 2 Peter, chapter 1. Watch this. Now, remember, we're validating the fact that Jesus went to the cross and covered all the bases. He covered everything that you and I could possibly face in life. This is Bible. Let me give it to you. It's a powerful scripture. 2 Peter. Let's look at verse 3, chapter 1. According as his divine power has given unto us, watch this, all things. How many things? I can't hear you. How many things? All things. Watch this. That pertain unto life and godliness. That's in the Bible, word for word. Jesus, by his divine power, has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. When he went to the cross, he covered all the bases. The prophet Isaiah put it this way in Isaiah chapter 53. Surely he has borne our griefs. The Hebrew word griefs is sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. Listen to me. Because most of the time when we think about the cross, we focus on sin. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is true. That, that is correct. It's just not complete. Jesus covered all the bases. For he bore our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our distresses. Watch it. It goes on to say, and our pains of punishment. He bore our sorrows and our pains. He was wounded for our transgression. That's in the Bible. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, or let's put it this way, the punishment that was needful. Watch this. For you and I to obtain peace. The, the, the Hebrew word peace is shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Glory to God. I'm getting excited because it backs up what I just said. He covered all the bases. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Freedom from fear. Freedom from agitating passion. Folks, this is the full gospel. Jesus paid it all. Glory to God. Sin had left a crimson stain. But Jesus washed me. Why this? No. Watch this. He made me whole. That's in the book of Isaiah. He, he, he was wounded for our transgression. Listen to it. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being was upon him. Where? On the cross. And by his stripes. Oh, God. When, when the Roman soldiers took that whip and lashed it against his back. A cat of nine nails, pulling flesh off of his back, cutting the skin. When, when he was bruised, the Bible says, by his strength, every time they hit him, oh, God, we were healed and made whole, made complete. Jesus paid it all. Glory be to God. Now, the Bible says in the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, 
that God had made Jesus to be sin for us. Watch this. This is on Calvary's cross. Who knew no sin? Jesus never sinned. That's in the Bible. He was spotless. Spotless Lamb of God. But he was made to be sin. In other words, 